over the October 16th meeting of the Niles Main District Library. Trustee Kadir. Trustee Kadir is on uh, online with us remotely through the illness. Trustee Kadir, are you there? I'm here. Okay, excellent. Trustee Durbeck? Present. Trustee Schoenfeld? Here. Treasurer Botello? Present. Secretary Rosansky? Here. Vice President Schoenko? Here. Here. And Secretary, or uh, President Keenan? Here. Okay. Please stand for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. time for public comment and the first person on the list for public comment is Elliot Hoshiman. Good evening board. This is Elliot Oshman. In the past few months I have indicated that in future comments I would deal with lies, damn lies, statistics and hypocritical actions. I had also at that time indicated I would be providing very specific examples and providing exact dates and indeed the exact time during that meeting as to when the statements were made or actions taken. I will start with three quotes, then an urge for people to vote, then those clarifications I just mentioned. The first quote from Oscar Wilde, the truth is rarely pure and never simple. The second quote from the movie, A Few Good Men, the truth, you can't handle the truth. And finally from George Bernard Shaw, beware of false knowledge, it's more dangerous than ignorance. Early voting for the November election will start next week in three relevant local locations. Village Hall in Niles from Monday the 21st through the 4th, at the Des Plaines Library on those same dates, and at Glenview Village Hall on those dates as well. Please vote for those local representatives who have looked out for the library and its interests in the last two to four years. The next election for the Library Board will be Tuesday, April 1, 2025 a mere five months and 15 days away. First example of hypocritical actions and inability to listen or to hear or to consider information from anyone else. The meeting of December 21, 2022 is Umar Kadir's installation. There was a very long discussion about an exchange of emails about submissions to the president for items for inclusion in the next agenda. Someone, no names please, insisted that she was not half of the sort of, oops, again, no name another trustee's email. So she refused to read the follow-up email, which was sent before the deadline for inclusion. One of her comments at approximately 155 into the meeting was, I cannot engage in nonsense. I have a lot to do. Then she also disagreed with the request from Trustee Kadir about having four trustees call in a meeting. She had to have then Director Rademacher read the exact wording of the bylaws, advising how trustees could call a meeting. Then she starts a tap dance about getting an agenda process asking for people to email what they thought should be the agenda item listing. This was at 2.11.48 into this meeting. Second example, the October 19, 2022 meeting. Specifically at 1.27.08, Trustee Olson asked to have the issue of change of the hiring increase on the next agenda. Someone in charge of the agenda, no names, tap danced about not answering comments because they weren't in the form of question. Then someone else, also not named, insisted that she had three separate emails directed to the president, <coughs> to which there was no response. The president insisted that since they were not questions, she was not required to answer them. I would mention the phrase, what goes around, comes around. Remember these when you vote in late March or early April of next year. Thank you and good night. Madam <coughs> President, I'd like to make a motion to uh, move item 11a the presentation by dr ben collins the superintendent of park ridge niles school district 64 about their upcoming referendum to uh before approval of the minutes is there a second second okay Let's see trustee kadir how do you vote trustee kadir umir are you there? Yes. 
Sorry, I had put it on mute, so I was saying yes. But <laughs> How do you vote? Sorry about that. We're going to yes, I, I vote yes. To Thank me. you. Trustee, Dip Trustee Dibblick? Um, no. <coughs> Trustee Schofield? No. Treasurer Botello? Yes. Secretary Rosansky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. President Keene? Yes. Five to two passes. Okay, before we proceed, I just want to comment that it is my understanding that library board meetings are not a platform for voting issues or politics. While this matter may be a personal issue to some of the trustees, this is, is not this is not right now, so this is not where it should be handled. Thank you. Did we change our bylaws to Thank accommodate you. this? Uh, President Keene, did you change the bylaws? No, it's not against our bylaws. So you change them to accommodate political issues? Can I? Sure. Um, this is nonsense. The, I'll, I'll address the reason why Dr. Ben Collins is here today. Uh, over the last three to four weeks, uh, I've been in multiple meetings with multiple members of the community, and a lot of people are coming asking about the referendum that they have. District 64 is doing a great job. They were at the Niles Park District. They're going to the village. They're meeting with the mayor. They're meeting with people across the board. So that way, if we're asked, we are informed. As well, we are broadcasted live on YouTube, so Niles residents have a lot of questions. It's not as easy for everybody to get out to get questions answered. So I personally met with uh, Dr. Collins a week and a half ago, Ben, I believe it was. And the conversation was had if we would be welcome to this. I brought it to the president as an agenda item, you know, going through it. It was not against our bylaws or anything else. And this is a great way for District 64 to inform our Niles community of what's going on. They have a lot of questions. Okay, well, I don't have time to go over the bylaws. I will definitely engage in that later. This is not the forum for politics or any voting issues. I know he, he has a concern about getting the voice out to the public. This certainly isn't the way to do it. But since Trustee Keene and you think it is, I just wanted to make sure it's out there for the public to understand that we haven't changed our bylaws. That's it was correct. just your decision. Thank you. So thank you. Um, can I say something, please? Um, I live in 64. I also worked at 207 when Dr. Ben worked there. So I have some knowledge of him. But I'm shocker of all shockers, Carolyn. Uh, I also do not believe the library board should be a political place. But it is what it is, and so we'll listen. I just have a reminder for the full board. If there is an objection from board members, you do also have the option to put forward a motion to not have an item on the agenda discussed, if you so wish, and we can see what the opinion of the full board is. Just you to could always say something. Days I'm sure it'll be because, five to you know, two. We've had the agenda and since my Friday. purpose, my purpose of speaking at a board meeting is not to change your minds, because I know that won't happen, but to bring it to the public, because I do <laughs> represent them. But thank you for that. Uh, we all do. Thank you, Carolyn. And, and just also to uh, say that I have also uh, talked with um, Ben here about getting a public forum in the library space so that the public would be welcome to come to that. It would not be a library sponsored event, but it is something where uh, he can rent the room. It's a totally and, different situation. And it's a completely different situation, but it is also something that will be available to the public, just putting that out there as well. And I think you have that scheduled for the 21st, correct, mm -hmm. at noon? So we have that coming up as well right here in Niles Main District Library. It's a totally different situation. Okay. So thank you for being here, Ben, please. Uh, sure. All right. Um, how do you typically want me to do this? Do you want me just to stand here? Is that okay? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Um, if you want to just pass those around. Um, that was our last flyer that went out to the community. Uh, we are running a referendum, and um, I think it was really ironic about where I where I am on the agenda is I'm right I'm right before the action for a proposed I have one. I don't know emergency one. HVAC repair. Thank you. Um, essentially that's that's the situation that we're in. Uh, we've got a lot of aging buildings, three of which are 97 years old, and 
our school district is 10% uh, of it is made up of the Niles community and Niles students. Um, they attend two of our elementary schools and one of our middle schools, and in some cases other, other places too. Um, we are putting a building bond referendum out to the public. Um, I'm here in an informational setting to, sh to share um, just in case uh, people are receiving questions or want to contact me later to talk about it. Um, I've made my way around all the public boards as much as I possibly can um, in our school district and um, we've done everything you know in our power to ensure that uh, our taxpayers are informed about the decision before them because ultimately it's going to be their will in, in what direction we go. Um, just like you have to maintain buildings and the park district has to maintain buildings, these are public entities that all of us pay tax dollars into. Uh, especially when we've got schools that have to do very different things than when they were originally built nearly 100 years ago. Um, our biggest issue is always going to be the health, safety, and security of our students and staff. I've got a first grade daughter and um, there are certain circumstances that I can't imagine ever her being in or myself being in as a parent. Um, but unfortunately, that's the situation that we're, we're faced with. So when we've got schools that are 97 years old, 75 years old, they are not built for a modern infrastructure um, that would ultimately keep all of our students and staff safe. On all, and the same thing goes for HVAC systems that are well beyond their end of life. Our boiler at Lincoln Middle School actually just failed this morning. Um, we've had a lot of emergency repairs. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars that become unexpected. Um, throughout the school year and ultimately you're just going to get to a point and you understand this as a, as a public board where when you're putting a lot of things in towards maintenance that means you're not putting a lot of things in other places um, and for us that we're going to have difficult conversations and decisions irregardless of what takes place with the referendum um, we certainly have a full day kindergarten tuition that needs to go away and then some other capital improvements in the long run in terms of like securing the 30-year plan um, that are going to be important for us. So um, you can see a lot of information before you. I know you've got a busy agenda. I don't want to take up more of your time, but I'm certainly uh, you know, willing to take any questions you might have. Um, but I do appreciate just the opportunity to speak, and I do appreciate the public service that all of you do because uh, your work is really important for us, in particular, just the amount of knowledge and, um, and understanding that libraries bring. I mean, we have a shared interest in, in engaging our community and educating our community. So thank you for thank you for your service in that regard too. Yeah, to second that real quick, uh, you know, what you say it was 10% of the 64 is so this does affect our families and kids that are in our community and that we represent. So it's great for us to have the knowledge to be able to answer any questions and, and things of that nature for our constituents as we're out there throughout different election times. So I appreciate you coming in and sharing that with us. Anything I can answer for anybody? Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Okay, thank you for your time. Have thank a good you. evening. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. Is there a motion to approve the minutes oh, of the September 18th meeting? I would like to make a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the September 18th, 2024 regular board meeting. I'll second. Oh, excuse me, please. Any comments or questions on the meeting minutes? Okay. Yes, up. Yeah. Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Uh, yes. Trustee Jerblake? Um, I abstain. <clears throat> Trustee Shoka? Yes. Yes? Trustee Patello? Yes. Secretary Rosensky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. Rosensky? Yes. Six yeses, one abstain passes. I'd like to make, to make a motion to approve the operating expenses of $136,728.18, payroll expenses of $263,154.53, special reserve expenses of $173,325, for a total monthly expense of $573,277.71. Second. Any questions? 
don't have a question, but I did want to make a comment. Um, I, I thought it was interesting where three months into, four months into our budget year, or we're going into our fourth month of our budget year, and looking at a lot of the budget line items to see us so far on the budget on things and, and, and really locked in. Uh, the one that I particularly like to see is right now we're at 15% of our legal fees. We're, this is the, I, I look back uh, two years on budgets and at this point, the library the last two years has usually been around 45 to 50% of their legal budgets already. So that just shows alone how far we've come as a board that we're not needing to go to the lawyer constantly for questions when we have the proper trainings and we're going through the trainings as a board. So, uh, you know, and I want to thank Director Marshall for a lot of that because she's leading, she's championing a lot of the trainings and stuff. So I appreciate that and I, I know the whole board really does. So, but that was my comment. We're just, we're doing so well with our budget right now. It's, it's great. Thank you. And to follow that up as far as some of the items under budget are simply because we're having so much flux in staffing that, for example, with ordering items in adult services, at the moment we are down three librarian positions and one assistant supervisor position, which is posted currently. So as we build more staff, we will be able to further spend the budget and catch up to the requirements of you know, the state guidelines and things of that nature. Yeah. But where we're at right now um, is reflective of that, as well as us just being conscientious of spending. Could I just ask one question? Sure. <clears throat> um, in regard to the decline in legal fees, mm -hmm. what specifically do we attribute has changed regarding the need for legal fees that now shows a decrease? I cannot answer that question because I wasn't asked to research it and I wasn't here the previous mm -hmm. fiscal because year. Because I think that would be important. What were we doing last year at this time and why were we... Uh, in need of such legal matters, although we know much has changed. So I don't know if it has much to do with any specific input on our part, but just the nature of issues being resolved and, and us moving forward. So I, I'd like to, to know really what the difference was so we can better understand whether we did something specifically or it was just the nature of the library progressing and going forward. I can try to get that information. I'm Absolutely. sure that it has Thank something you. to do with the union contract being done. Oh, I'm positive it And does. if it did, then that really is no bearing on no, us. Well, it does, is because the union was in direct response to your leadership. So um, yes, it does. Well, not in regards to Trustee Trunco's comment. I mean, it, it, it doesn't... It, the union negotiations being over had nothing to do with us doing anything in addition. It's yes, just a process. This board made that I'm not going to argue the point, but Good. thank you, That's and I fabulous. appreciate your, your input. I just wanted to say that I'm really excited about having Comics Plus. I saw that on there. And having what? Something called Comics Plus, mm -hmm. which is an on, online platform for reading comics and graphic novels and manga. So I know we're considering getting that right now, and so I'm really excited because it's I want to know when you stuff. get it. Yeah, We've gotten patron requests for it, and I know we have a teen anime club, and they're really excited about yeah, the yes, Comics Plus Because as well. I know my grandchildren will both go online for that stuff. Plus, I probably will, too. <laughs> Are we ready to take a vote, then? Yeah. All right, thank you. Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Jerglick? Um, I'll need to abstain from this group. No worries. Trustee Schofield? Yes. Judge Batello? Yes. So good to Rosatsky? Yes. Thank you. Ms. President Choco? Yes. Thank you. And President Keane? Yes. Thank you. Six yeses, one abstain, passes. Before we move forward, I do just want to uh, let everyone here know and the public know that we are having issues with YouTube's audio at the moment for the live stream of the meeting. Um, we do have the audio recording going, so Rich, if he cannot uh, fix the audio for YouTube or if the problem continues, we can at least post the audio from the recording so that everyone can hear what was discussed. So that would Thank take you. a day or two to do that then, if he has to do both? Um, I'll try to do it tonight. Oh, okay. 
just, I'm not trying to, you know, force you into anything there, Rach. I was just trying to let the residents know they might not get it immediately. Mm -hmm. And our staff knows, so we'll, the people who called in, they're letting them know that information, but we'll post it later. Perfect. Thank you, Rich. You're welcome. Treasurer Patel. Madam President, I have for you the financial report uh, through September 30th, 2024. The beginning balance as of uh, October 31st, 2024 was $17,050,657. The breakdown consists of revenue with investment income at $51,492, fines $1, lost books $561, pay for print $476, Books for sale, 959. Book um, passports, 3,938. That's really great. And mm -hmm. other consists of 329. That gives us a subtotal of 57,756. Moving on with expenditures, including salary, employee salaries, 275,879. Employee fringe benefits at 50,832. Social Security, 20,494. Unemployment came in at 155. Subtotal there is 347,460. Operating expenses, including library materials, 42,863. Library operating, 5,795. General and administration, 24,074. Vehicle operations, we had a credit of $300. Utilities at 9,240. Capital expenditures, 17,335. Building and equi equipment maintenance, 8,343. Subtotal there is 107,350. <coughs> now, that leaves us with a general fund balance total per the balance sheet dated at September 30th, 2024 at $16,582,081. Any questions from anyone? Madam President, thank you. Thank you. You know, I have a question. I don't yes. know if it's relevant now, but it has to do with um, investments. You had entertained the idea of um, switching our investments from the bank to the state of Illinois. Sure. Has that, I mean, I don't know the status of that. I, uh -huh. I didn't make it at last month's meeting, and I was just wondering where we are with that. Sure. Um, so that's still in the works. And um, I'm, I had suggested to the president for us to form a committee uh, in order to get more uh, participation from the rest of the board, uh, as there are uh, other considerations in terms of um, possible options. And the thinking here is that uh, we're looking to do investments longer term. Mm -hmm. Now that we have uh, a better sense of budgeting and um, I believe that we're in a financial situation now where, uh, given the considerations of our uh, planning for our five-year strategic plans, that we go ahead and consider more of those long-term finances and uh, the options that are out there. So the state of Illinois is one, one consideration. Option. Okay, and you'll be bringing forth others. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, so we'll have a discussion about forming a committee to discuss that in greater detail. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone else have a report for trustee reports? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Director Marshall? Okay. Um, in in addition to what has been listed here, um, I would like to invite uh, one of our newly promoted staff members up to introduce herself um, to the board or reintroduce herself in her new role. So Mary Ellen Essig is the Adult Services Department Supervisor. She started that position on October 1st, 2024. She's been with this library for almost 30 years, and she's been promoted from the assistant supervisor of the same department, and I'd just like her to say a few words. Hi. Um, as Valerie says, I'm Mary Ellen Effig. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. I'm very excited to be the AES supervisor. Um, I started in February of 1995. This was 
just before the internet came online. So that's <laughs> challenging. <laughs> what has happened since then. Um, so let's see. So I'm looking forward to moving the department towards a collaborative department and more of an outward facing uh, department where we go out into the community and either around the same area and up north. So some of the things that we've been doing is we've, um, with Niles Historical Center, we're doing a couple programs there in the spring. So that will be, um, you know, an easy way for people to come. It's a little closer to the north end. Uh, recently, we I put together the Stories of Survival, which is going to be in January, and that's going to feature uh, like a banner <coughs> stand from the Illinois Holocaust Museum, <coughs> um, and that's going to be about different um, Holocaust experiences um, with personal items, so it's going to tell their stories through like a book or a doll or something like that. And um, also, it'll talk about other genocide um, countries of experience, that kind of thing. Um, so, does anybody have any questions? I encourage questions. I encourage questions from the community. Um, if they want to stop by and ask me anything, um, feel free. I'd love to meet you. Can you talk about Global Neighbors? I'm excited yeah. about that. Yes. So, Global Neighbors, we decided that. Um, we were going to introduce people to different people in our community. The first one that we're doing is Korean. And so that's going to feature Korean dancing. Finally. Cooking. <laughs> oh, I've been asking for this for years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then um, we're going to do a craft. Wonderful. So we're going to Wonderful. do the Korean lantern. Um, it's a lotus yeah, lantern. Mm -hmm. It's definitely gorgeous. Very popular. Mm -hmm. So the next quarter we're doing, um, I think that's, so that's going to be December, mostly in January and February. Good, draw the people. <laughs> yeah. So for May, we're going to recognize Asian Pacific people. And so we're going to do Hawaiian dancing. And we're doing Filipino cooking. Awesome, awesome. So we're hoping, I'm going to come up with a craft, because crafts are my thing. So if you do the pop-in, craft. I could find um, out for you, see if my family has any ideas. Yep. Yeah. So that'd be great. Um, and then the quarter for the Asian Pacific is March, did you say? It's March, April, May. Most of them are going to be in May. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. A great idea. So glad yeah. that you are doing this. Trying See what happens when we pull these great people from the bottom and get them to the top of the ranks. Thank you so much. Thanks. Anyone else have any questions? Welcome. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a pleasure having you, baby girl. You, <laughs> and another thing that I did list in my report, but I would like to invite Rich to talk about is the progress on the roof project because we have made excellent progress. Good. Awesome. I've gotten so many positive comments out and about about the roof being done. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Hello, board. How are you? Hey, how are you? So I'm happy to announce that as of Wednesday, uh, the roof project's uh, roof component uh, has been completed. Uh, we had the manufacturer of the roof membrane on site doing their inspection. Uh, we passed, so they. Yes. Today is Wednesday. You mean today or last? I'm week? sorry. <laughs> uh, on what was it? Ray? Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Today is all one day for me, <laughs> so it just you know. Um, and now I have this YouTube issues <laughs> to deal with. Um, yeah. So the uh, Carl Carlisle was out here. That is a manufacturer of our PVC key. Um, membrane and they said that uh, it was installed correctly and they will be issuing us a 20-year warranty on the membrane which is what we were uh, anticipating and 
uh, planning for. So, we're so that's mostly that. the flat roofs, the membrane, then, right? Uh, the flat roof, but there are slopes on our flat roof, so to speak. Uh, okay. The older parts of the building um, have a slope to them. So we have the membrane pretty much on everything then? Yeah, the membrane covers about maybe 97, 98% of the roof. The rest of it is um, copper um, on the very top of the rotunda and the portico, which mm -hmm. is technically not in the building. Um, and everything else is uh, is the membrane. So, so we're, we're there. Uh, we dealt with all the incidentals that come with uh, having a roof uh, replaced. Um, namely, uh, the roof needed to be adhered to a backer board. Uh, it can't be adhered to the old roof membrane because they're incompatible. Uh, one's a um, like a rubber uh, membrane and the current one is a polymer based, so like plastic. Um, and the way that you attach them is with screws. So those screws would go through uh, the roof decking, uh, the wood decking, and uh, the code uh, for electric code and fire, elect fire uh, code uh, didn't require that uh, the conduit be uh, suspended lower than the ceiling. So it was either attached or in the case of this entire roof, there's um, you know about three and a half inch of double decking um, and there's channels on top of that wood. So think of this being the, the roof and now we channel out a, a channel for a conduit and then we put the conduit there and then we put membrane on there or insulation and that's the roof. So when those screws go in, they have no idea where it's going and they need to attach it. So we had a, a number of electrical fire alarm kind of issues where they hit conduit, uh, grounded or shorted the wires, and it was a experience. Uh, there was say. no danger to anyone or the building. Right. We so, just had to replace some of the wires it's and all it's been, been fixed. fixed. Since, yes. we, since we had a working uh, sprinkler system, which we verified the alarms would go off, uh, the fire department allowed us to not have to do institute fire watch uh, during those times. Uh, so as we explored and fixed it all. So hmm. we still have some remaining uh, surface ceiling uh, repairs to do uh, from the access that they provided uh, in the building sometimes uh, wasn't adequate for us to go into the ceiling and actually replace things. Um, so we had to provide new access. So if you see that, pardon our dust sign will be up a little bit more. So, <laughs> But yeah, it was an experience and um, I'm very glad that now we have a very uh, safe way to go up to the three highest roof uh, decks because we have staircase um, and uh, that's a very important thing. We don't have to go up a ladder that ends at the roof line and then you have to try to get on the roof and more importantly try to get off the roof. Um, yeah, so while you're looking down to the first floor in the staircase. So yeah, so those things. The RTU for the server room, the rooftop unit, air conditioner was also replaced at the same time. Um, so that's working well. Um, so we're very happy with that. And we were able to close two roof hatches um, and remove three exhaust fans that were abandoned uh, actually over two decades ago. So <laughs> makes it a little bit better, a lot, a lot more water tight. And the old um, mm -hmm. elevator? The elevator shaft, yes, thank you for reminding me. That was a little bit more work than everyone had envisioned uh, from the demolition side and also the framing side, reframing, um, due to the fact that uh, two of the walls, um, the cinder blocks were half the height of the other course, so they weren't level. Mm -hmm. And so they had anticipated that, you know, when you have a shaft for an elevator, you think that the courses of cinder block are all laid at the same height. But in this case, no, the outside wall was half the dis you know, half, half the height of a cinder block, so it was offset. So they had to adjust that, they did, and now it's nice and flat. We're um, expecting the flute to come in in the next couple of weeks for the boiler flute that we're replacing as part of this. Um, we have two boilers operational, so we should be good. Um, in, in this case, we started up the boiler yesterday, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and because it's getting cold. So, you know, the building, we try to retain the heat as much as possible, but if it gets cold longer, then you have to start the heating. So. Um, Thank you I for all I'm your hard work. Covered. Covered. I think yeah. it's amazing the differences they've made in the flat roofing material because 
we wound up getting rid of it because every, every five or so years, we're having to replace it. So we totally sloped our right. and the the EPM roof that we had, that rubber roof, um, confused sometimes roofers. And you know, if you had an issue with that, and they tried to bond it with what is much more popular, which is the roof that we have now, um, it would melt the rubber. And so, you know, more they, they look at it like, what is this? You know, so now we have a roof that's more standard with the industry. And they have a 20-year guarantee. Yeah, on yeah it. very happy. Fantastic. With that. Yeah. Well, and a great test yesterday as well. Yeah, <laughs> they so cleaned it up pretty hard. They, uh -huh. they, they did a great job cleaning the roof to make sure that, you know, you could inspect it well. Um, but yeah, no, it, uh, it rained very well. And, <laughs> it's great news. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, you know, a big thank you to the staff, you know, yes. to deal with the parking and moving it around. We have another situation on Friday where we're going to take advantage of doing repairs on the lots that uh, the board had approved uh, the previous okay. month so um, so we don't have to close the lot um, but yeah so the yeah. staff have have to park it fifth third and you know they're willing to do that to help out it's going to right, up a little bit too. can i just ask just two questions for clarification so regarding the roof you did state the roof was replaced we did not rip off the roof and no. replace it we did what we had talked about years ago it was the membrane was, gave, we got a 20 year warranty on the membrane, at least for the majority of it, and then it was spot replaced where it was necessary because of the issues with the different roofs, correct? So we actually repaired it. We didn't replace the entire roof because remember, initially, um, three years ago, the controversy was under uh, my presidency, the goal was to make all the repairs. Uh, but everyone else wanted a, uh, a roof replacement project. So we didn't replace the roof. We just took care of all the issues. And now the, the entire roof is up to code or up to standard. And you did get a 20 year warranty on the membrane. Because remember that was questionable depending on what the village was going to decide. So um, many statements there. I'm not sure which yes, one. Yes, right. Well, the point is <laughs> the point is that this and was I'm the same thing her, right? that we had um, initiated when I was president, but the, it caused a great deal of controversy because the um, community was convinced unless we ripped out the roof and replaced it. It was raining and the whole place was going to fall apart. So I just want everyone to know this wasn't a, this roof replacement, this tear off everybody claimed we needed. It's exactly what we had recommended, even though it wasn't, it was, ne it was publicized negatively. So because that's it one. Was recommended to and then the second the thing I want to bring up, excuse me, please not interrupt. The, that time. the second thing I want to bring up is the parking lot. So we are not replacing the parking lot, which was the other controversy, because we had said we would just initiate the necessary repairs. And you are going forward with making all the repairs. I know there's issues about several things but we are not replacing the entire parking lot either okay so back to the roof we replaced the entire membrane so we have a right brand that's the membrane but we didn't all i asked for so we, we, did not, the we did not tear off the roof like Just everyone so we were going to tear off the roof right and we didn't and need to. uh what we decided to do is before we approached the board and stated um we're ready to go out to bid and here's where the bidders came in uh, we approached right. the board, I believe, in December and asked uh, uh, verbally if the board would agree to a thermal scan of the roof. Uh, the board agreed, I believe, in January or February, followed up with an official motion. Um, we had uh, done that roof moisture scan um, in order to verify whether or not uh, we should go through the expense of ripping out uh, not just the membrane, but the insulation underneath, all the way to the bare roof. Um, it was determined that I believe 12 out of 450 squares. I think it was um, 14, but it was a small amount. Yeah, it was a very small amount of surface area that uh, they recommended the insulation be ripped up. Um, and so at that time, uh, remember there was the better, best uh, options and good in there. And, mm -hmm. you know, they changed as. Uh, the thermal scan came back, and what was recommended was to leave exactly the same, 
uh, material, the insulation, and uh, to take the membrane off and put a new one on. Um, and the village decided that that was perfectly okay with it, with them. Uh, it would be okay. They would give us a variance on the entirety of the roof, which was different uh, than it was in 2021, where they wanted us to uh, replace it with higher uh, R value, so more insulation. At the time of bidding, uh, when we went out, uh, it turned out that the membrane could not be detached easily, and we would uh, basically hurt the insulation. We would damage it to uh, the extent that we'd need to replace it. Mm -hmm. So it was determined that uh, we could score, as in cut, the membrane um, prior to putting a backer board, uh, so a thin piece of insulation that would be screwed in, and that backer board provided the correct substance for the new membrane to be glued adhered to. And so that's what was done. And that uh, turned out to what I believe was, we estimated maybe up towards to a $400,000 savings as opposed to ripping everything out and redoing the insulation. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you so, so much for that. But the, the dynamics changed because we were able to get a variance. We were able to do an additional moisture scan that showed where we needed to be in terms of the replacement. And then the board made an accurate, I believe, assessment not to waste money on repair, you know, ripping off insulation, that's good. So, um, <laughs> and Rich, just to confirm, you said by doing that moisture scan, which cost $7,500, it, it, it saved us 400000 right. correct? Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. it allowed the board to make that decision um, and direct uh, our engineering firm to bid in such a way that we wouldn't have to, you know, waste that. Well, plus money, the fact that Naya, the village changed their variance because when we were originally yes, going to do it, to do with the they wanted us to do a lot more than what they made it, had us do this time. And that would have cost us more. So actually, I guess by waiting, we wound up saving money. I think having the thermal scan was the best thing for us. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Thank so. you, Rich. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for all that. Great. Thank you. OK, excellent. Okay. Okay, two small things. Um, a lot of the public and a couple of trustees have asked what we have available for the public that want to register to vote. So we now have a display um, down in between the patron services section and the commons area on that column for voter information oh, cool. that is nonpartisan. We also have a uh, web page on our website that is related to different resources for voters information, also nonpartisan. Um, so that is available to everyone. And our Not So Haunted Halloween event is on Sunday, October 27th from 2 to 4 p.m. I welcome the trustees to join us, whether as patrons or if you would like to volunteer. We do have um, a lot of team volunteers helping us handing out candy, but that's what we would need assistance with, is handing out candy for uh, kids who come in and trick or treat. So Already please. volunteered. Perfect. So is that Saturday or Sunday? That's a Sunday. Sunday, October 27th. From and it starts at uh, 2. 2? Two. Two. Two? Yeah. So, okay. I'm sorry, did you say 2 to 4? 2 to two 4. To four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could, uh, if you want to reach out, I could get the same two uh, individuals that help with the summer reading kickoff as well. Perfect. I'll send you all an email as well just to remind you. Um, I just wanted to bring it up in the meeting for the public too. If they want to come, it's going to be a great event. Um, not as large of scale as in previous years, but we're still it's having not. a photo. It's not as large of scale, but every desk will have trick or treat stations that people can visit. The staff are going to decorate desks and have a staff uh, decorating contest, which should be fun. <laughs> Very good. Um, and we'll have the same photo ops we've had in the past. Now. But you're not going to have the table set up with uh, outside people? like Exactly. It's not going to be to that scale because Annie just started in her position. Okay, and so I we understand that she's on to... her own right now exactly. with her staff not being able to be at work. Exactly. Okay, it's understandable. Those are the only things I had to add that were not in my written But report. that's something this, the residents should be aware of because that's something they're used to. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was brought up, um, I, this is off the record, but um, in terms of voting, mm -hmm. with the actual, um, what's going on with the municipal building, mm -hmm. 
they're wondering if they could park in the library to cross over to vote. Um, I don't know if you can get in on Oakton. You, if you cross Walking. it, you have to go in through the parking lot. Rich has something. So all, all summer long, we've had residents park um, closer to the display sign and mm -hmm. then walk across um, mm -hmm. and commented that, oh, thanks for letting us do it. I'm like, it's fine. It's there. It's for you to be able to park. Public and, parking, yeah. so we have no prohibition. So you can that. walk so, so you into can walk. from Oakton. I was told but, you yeah, had to come you from have to the go in through. You can um, go in off of Oakton, but I think you, they recommend you go It's a you bit of a longer basement. walk around the building than coming okay. from but the other direction, it's but doable. it is accessible. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank yeah. you. Well, yeah, I know that's, that's the, main the problem. Entrance, mm -hmm. The main entrance is still closed, mm -hmm. yeah. right. but you have to either go through the parking lot and take the elevator, or you go in right off of Oakton. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. so you can go in off Oakton, okay, because I've been avoiding Oakton because it looks <laughs> notorious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Other communications. Is she still looking at her stuff? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm trying to get there. <laughs> okay, the first thing listed in communications is a letter from the union regarding remote work. I will read it out so the public knows what it says. It says, Dear Library Trustees, we appreciate hearing the board's feedback on the remote work proposal discussed by the committee. We remain disappointed by every member of the Board of Trustees who voted against the proposal. However, we are committed to continuing to work with our membership to provide a data-driven proposal that shows the clear benefits to our membership, the patrons of the library, and library management. We hope every board member will take the feedback we provide in the spirit it is given and attempt for the union and the employer to work together to improve working conditions for all of the bargaining unit members. So I have had a couple of staff um, ask me about this and I encourage data-driven approaches in general and in any case whenever um, some new information comes up about any situation I encourage them to bring it to the board and if it's something that I feel we can support that the board always has the opportunity to potentially change their minds also bring data forward so I just wanted to bring this to the attention of the board in case they have something to bring forward at this time they don't have additional data but I do know that they're like they said in their letter thinking about gathering more so the unions thinking of gathering more information or individual employees will be coming to us with their additional the union okay got mm -hmm. it all right my recollection speaking is not coming easy mm -hmm. my recollection of this <clears throat> was according to the attorney we were using at that time we had a certain time frame mm -hmm. and they were supposed to come to us by that time frame and tell us hey because we had people who were going to meet with them and they never did mm -hmm. so that's why it went the way it did well i think we, well, isn't it well no we no. yes and no so mm -hmm. they did have a certain time frame and they didn't come to us in that time frame we graciously extended that time frame and we did have a meeting uh, with uh, union members, uh, they brought forth policies, some that were, uh, after doing some due diligence, uh, have expired, have changed since the last time that they may have got that policy from uh, that particular library, or some, some of the libraries that they gave us. Um, we as a board voted not to uh, do a work from home policy at that point. But we are, as, as Eric Marshall said, we are very open to sitting back down with them at a point where they have data-driven uh, documents that are still accurate and still valid um, and are still in effect in the libraries that they have in it. Uh, this is not something that's an open and shut case. It's, it is something that I know as we see things around the world, more things are opening up, more people are going back. So I think... Uh, work from home had its benefit for a long time and uh, at that particular meeting we uh, the committee plus the board at that point did not see the benefit for the library at that point uh, but again we're open to definitely sitting down and, and 
going through some more data points with them when they have everything ready. They don't have it. Like, we had a dis uh, director Marshall and I had a discussion today about this, and I said I'm, I have dates open in November that I can meet with them, and she said they're not re they're not ready at this point. So, uh, so there's no tentative date. There's no dates being tossed around. There's nothing because they don't have the information ready for us. We, and we. Sorry, go ahead. My assumption would be it's probably going to take a, 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 probably two to three more months for them to get everything okay. ready. So we're probably looking at even just sitting down to talk again, probably sometime in first quarter of 2025, I would assume. Okay. They haven't told me anything about deadlines we, whatsoever. I think what, they just want to know that the board would be open mm -hmm. to sure. a, additional Discuss. conversations. From what, my knowledge, and, we weren't really no. given any proposals except, hey, we want this. Well, we didn't, you don't know what we're voting for. You the know, committee they was give given it. proposals. Okay, well, yeah. um, so is it going to be, proven, so. so is it going to be the committee will meet with the union and not the whole board? That's, yeah, that would be the first step. And then the whatever information the committee gets, could the whole board get that information? So they we should. could at least review yeah. what? Sure, absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. thank they you. They should. That's what a committee is for. Valerie, I have a question. Sure. Um, with regards to labor and management meetings, um, how often are they held between the union and the... There's no monthly? set cadence. It depends on if issues come up. Yes. Um, we recently just had a labor management meeting about two weeks ago. So it, there's no set cadence. It just depends on when things come sure. up. We have talked about potentially setting a cadence, but for now this seems to work for both parties. Good. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, in all uh, truth, um, we're waiting on the union to provide us this data before yes. we can act. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next uh, items under communications are related to the serving our public library uh, serving our public 4.0 standards for Illinois public libraries chapters 7 and 8 so as I've done in some previous meetings I will just go through the checklist uh, at the end of each chapter uh, chapter 7 is related to collection management so the checklist is the library board of trustees ensures that the library has a publicly funded budget to purchase materials the minimum annual expenditure for materials for any size library should be a minimum of 8 to 12 percent of the operating budget. Ours is a little over 9 percent for this fiscal year, so we fall within those standards. Library budgets should put priority on purchasing materials that best serve their community. We absolutely do that. Um, the library has a written collection development policy approved by the board. We do have one, and it will be part of the policy committee's it will be on our review schedule moving forward. Um, not the most immediate one, but it, it is on the list. Materials are cataloged according to standard library practices utilizing Mark 21, AACR2 rules, Sears slash LC subject headings, and RDA. We do follow this. Our materials uh, services department is um, excellent at this type of work. Uh, library collections are evaluated annually to measure the effectiveness of community use of the collection and weeded if deemed appropriate. We absolutely do this and as part of the strategic plan I am going to suggest um, potentially doing a collection audit in the next five years, but that will be something moving forward once we um, start with the strategic plan mm -hmm. that we might consider. The library considers forming a cooperative collection plan with other libraries in close proximity to one another. We are part of CCS, so we do that. The library strives to complement its print collection by purchasing electronic materials and making them available to patrons through a variety of methods. We again have um, a very good track record in this and our statistics for electronic materials have been going up. So we're actually focusing a little bit more on this types of purchase um, in this fiscal year. The library publicizes and promotes interlibrary loan to its patrons. That is a very well used service here. And library staff is trained in and follows policies and procedures related to the Illinet Interlibrary Loan Code and the ALA Interlibrary Loan Code. Libraries agree to be responsible borrowers and lenders. And we have a very good relationship with other libraries through interlibrary loan. 
the next chapter. I have, um, oh, can sorry. I do have a question. Sure. Pardon me. Yeah. But um, with regards to the collections that yes. we currently have, sure. Uh, specific to language books, mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering when you do the audit, mm -hmm. or if there's an audit to be made, um, if we can have a comparison, because uh, I know we had a a period of time mm -hmm. when the board was considering reducing the collections of foreign languages. And if you can give me a sense of where we stand now um, versus during those times when there was consideration to re reduce that. Um, I can get data as far as um, usage of mm -hmm. the world languages materials yeah. that I can share. And as far as auditing the collection, there is a specific type of audit called a diversity audit that can help us understand the communities we work with, which will also be part of the strategic planning process. And it will see how our collection reflects those communities and how we can make it better. Sure, and, and so now these audits, um, I know they're in the future, mm -hmm. but um, are we talking about one year's period of time? or I would have to make a proposal because the audits, uh, we would have to hire an outside vendor. And so they can be somewhat costly and it's not something you would do every year or two years. So it's a bigger project that I would have to bring forward. I want to go through the strategic planning process to see what our priorities are before I can say when we would initiate the audit process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, and I had a, an audit sure. question as well. Um, I was of the impression that we did an audit every two years, but as I read this, the management checklist, it says that what it is is, um, Oh, I lost it now. I think it has to do with, it says the library has a written collection development policy. Mm -hmm. So that means within some time frame, we're purchasing items to make sure that we're developing. Yes. But we do, we've never audited all of everything? Like the oh, I'm not saying don't. we've never audited. We audit internally. But every five to 10 years, it's a uh, good practice within this industry to get an outside audit performed with more data from the community to see how we are reflecting the community and comparing to other libraries like um, the, so the tre treasurer Patella was just saying. So the audit then, see, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking the audit represent, our collections represent our library community. Mm -hmm. You're saying we need to look at other libraries to see what they're doing, but aren't shouldn't our collections be based on our our residents? Oh, absolutely. But what I mean by comparing to other libraries mm -hmm. is, for example, when you do a diversity audit, there are lists of books for different demographics, and the audit will tell us how many of those books we actually have in our collection in various languages, by various authors, on various subject types. And so we can see in our, like in the towns surrounding Niles and Main Township, are they having this particular book on this list check out a lot? And do we have similar demographics to that neighboring town? Sometimes we do. And so if we don't have that book, we can purchase it. It's another form of giving us advice on what to purchase. So the, uh, the, the company or whoever mm -hmm. performs this audit would be able to tell us mm -hmm what the percentages of the demographics are in our area, that would be the only way we'd get that information? That would be, so our strategic planning consultant would mm -hmm. get us the demographics of our community. And with that information from the strategic plan, the auditors can use that information to give us recommended lists to compare our collection to, to see if we okay. are meeting those standards. And I just want to throw another question out there. Now, sure. according to, is it CCS or CS or whoever we have mm -hmm. that keeps records of all the books that we either lend out or whatever, mm -hmm. we can't gather that information from them? We can gather some of that information from them in reports, but they would not be able to run the same type of diversity audit okay. as someone who specializes I in got this. it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're okay, welcome. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have questions? Okay. Um, chapter 8 is about system member responsibilities and resource sharing. So it connects to some of what we just talked about. And the checklist includes library staff and library board members are aware of the services offered by the regional library systems, which for us is Rails, and the Illinois State Library. 
The library promotes statewide cooperative services in addition to their own local services. Again, this gets a lot of use at our library. Library resources, information, and expertise are available via interlibrary loan, reciprocal borrowing, and other formal cooperative agreements, and the library participates in system delivery. The library abides by the Illinet Interlibrary Loan Code, as well as other formal regional and consortial agreements. Uh, the library administrator, library staff, and library board members actively participate as members of boards, committees, task forces, advisory councils, etc., at various <coughs> levels, including the regional library system, the Illinois State Library, and the Illinois Library Association, and bring a regional and statewide perspective that envisions all types of libraries, not just their local library and library type issues. So that was uh, some of what I was just talking about related to comparing to other libraries. Um, as part of CCS, all library directors within CCS are part of their governing board for that um, uh, institution, so I am part of that. We have other staff members who attend different um, committees and task forces for ILA Georgia in our, um, in our patron services department has helped to plan the ILA conference and helps plan reaching forward for local staff members. So our library is very involved. And we have a cataloger um, bay in our materials services um, who does world cataloging for our consortium as well because she's very skilled in that area. So we are very participatory in the library community, the local library community. Um, the library, in cooperation with regional library systems and the Illinois State Library, promotes statewide tax-supported public library service for every Illinois resident. If a legally established public library currently does not meet the eligibility requirements for Illinois State Library slash Illinois Office of the Secretary of State grants, the library should work in cooperation with its regional library system regarding grant eligibility and compliance. We are in compliance and we do get several grants from the Illinois State Library as well as um, age options grants um, and things like that for programs related to seniors. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of that chapter. Does anyone have questions about that one? Okay, Thank you. that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So we are on to unfinished business. Uh, Tim A is to discuss a tentative date options for uh, levy training. Um, are they available pretty much any time? For now, that's what uh, Jamie Racklin has told me. If we could give him two or three dates, he can let us know. Okay. And I told him that in the past, Mondays have worked really well. I don't know if that's the case at the moment but he does say Monday's work for him as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at my calendar. And we have to keep in mind that we need to have the levy is due on December 3rd. Yes. So we need to be able to have the training sooner and vote rather on than the later levy. so that we mm -hmm. can hopefully vote on it. So we're looking at Monday's then in November? Can, yes. Can I just, so you would plan to vote on the levy November, I don't know, 15th? Is at that, the board meeting Is that the board meeting in November? It's the 20th. The 20th? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Valerie mentioned uh, the possibility of if we wanted to do the training and vote on the levy at the same time. I don't know if we'd feel ready for that, but that's something we could. It's just a possibility, so we don't have to have two special meetings well, potentially. Well, what's involved on what with happens. the levy training? Do we think How that we, we need such a minute training that we could actually vote right after? I'm sorry? Do we really think this training is going to be have such a minute impact on our knowledge that we would vote already? That's the board's choice. Um, the training is going to include projections for different possibilities of the levy. It's not going to make any recommendations, but it will give information on what our specific budget looks like and what our levy would look like with different options. And so I would imagine that the board might want to digest that information, but I just wanted to put that out there. Well, so are we, so are we, can I just finish my question? So, so then the anticipation is after we have this training, then we would have amounts that we could be considering for the levy, which we would not have had going into the training. So we could maybe utilize those numbers. Mm -hmm. 
All right. I don't know if I want to have a discussion and then run right in, but it's up to you. Well, I know how difficult a, it is. Just, she's just giving options. That's well, I'm we just asking how, how, long, do, how right. long do they anticipate the training, training will take? About an hour and a half, like the previous budget one. So therefore, an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and then we're talking about voting on the levy at our meeting. We're going to have other things, too. Do we want to extend that meeting an extra hour and a half, or do we want to have a separate meeting? Well, that's why I was oh. suggesting potentially having the vote oh. at the special meeting for the training, because I don't know what might come up for November's meeting. But there might be other items and make that well, agenda yeah. longer. To so. me, might, we might be pushing it to try and well, confirm it. Oh, if we have the training and then vote at the November meeting, you're saying that we might have too many other things to do with the I'm meeting. Gonna, it's uh, possible. I'm going to uh, go with Carolyn's idea here. Um, I, I don't see the point of getting training and then voting immediately thereafter without any time to internalize it. So I'd rather do the training and then vote at the regular meeting. I agree with you. And, and with that being said, I'm going to recommend that uh, we move as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to throw out my availability for beginning on Monday the 28th of this month, uh, but certainly the notice. Through the 18th? All of the Mondays or just that Monday? Well, I'm, I'm just saying that I personally am available beginning the 28th of um, October. And so, the 11th you know, is Wednesday. Uh huh. So, well, it's all the training. Is anyone not available the 20th? I, I am not okay. actually available. My October is just full. I, I didn't see the need to rush. Could we not do this the beginning of November? Sure, we can. Sure. That's, I mean, I looked at my calendar before I came. It's a mess. I'm sorry. Okay, so which November Monday works for you? <laughs> anyone. Yeah, November well, for um, me is open. The well, fourth yeah. is the it earliest. So I'm not available on the fourth at all. Okay. You're not available the on the fourth. fourth? Uh, the sixth. The sixth. That's June. a Wednesday. The Wednesday. It's the first one. I can't do the sixth. First Wednesday. I can't do the sixth either. I can't do the sixth. I can do the sixth. How about the thirteenth? What day? What day is that? It's a Wednesday. The Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday before, before our meeting. Our regular Can we meeting? just have it on a Monday like we normally do? Well, yeah. we already but have we people can't who are saying we can't, can't come on Monday. I can't make it on the fourth. Um, but can you make it? the twenty eighth and the eleventh is Veterans Day. I'm not really sure we should. So that's the holiday. Yeah. No. No. I can't. Oh no. I will a, be. Yeah. Okay. How about a Friday? How about? Or what happened to that Wednesday? I'm okay with the Wednesday the thirteenth. I can't do any Wednesday. the thirteenth is fine with me. I can't. It's part time. This How about Friday the 8th? The 8th? Friday, That's November 8th. That's November. Are you all available? I don't know if I am, but just if you're all available, I'll, I'll... I'm available. Friday the 8th is not good for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you could have kept that covered. <laughs> okay. How, how many people can make Wednesday the 13th? Yes. I'm not. I'm in Springfield. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's two. Thursdays are not good. How about Tuesday? Tuesday. How about a Tuesday? Tuesday the twelfth. The twelfth. Or the fifth. Do the twelfth. election day. Oh, that's right. Yeah, fifth is election okay. day. Okay. November so twelfth, Tuesday. Tuesday is. Twelfth. Twelfth is good. This yeah, Friday. We did we have? Do we have a time? In, it's like seven p.m. Is that what we're thinking? Seven. Typically. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Usually yeah. It's no, like that's fine. Seven. I just want. Okay. November twelfth at seven p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and, and Trustee Batalo is is the tw are you here on the twelfth? Yes. Oh, yes. <coughs> well, Mary, you good on the twelfth? Yeah, I'm good on the twelfth. All right. Okay. November twelfth, Tuesday. Uh, that's seven p.m. on the twelfth, right? What? Seven p.m. Seven p.m. Yes. 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 Lovely training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you. Is this something? Yeah, Valerie's not here, but it's we okay. don't have a room. I got it. So There's no room. Yeah, Shakespeare. They just had some rehearsal up here on the 12th, so we'll have to talk to them. Well, Do we need a, such a big room? Usually she works late on Tuesdays, so for that reason, hopefully it's not bad. Are any she said to just get the date. Yeah, we'll are, find another room. No? Okay. Well, what, are there any rooms? Is there, isn't there any Rich, are there any rooms in the administrative offices we could kind of squeeze in? 
No, because we have to take into consideration of having the webcam. Oh, all right, all right. All gotcha. That. Sorry, never mind. It's easier to yeah. speak to the Shakespeare the project and <laughs> okay. have them move or cancel. All right, them. thank you. That's possible. We could just video re or audio record, Rich, no? Or uh, well, we still need a room. Yeah. To do that. What about the. the and we need a projector because I'm sure that uh, the last time there was a projection. I don't know about this uh, levy presentation, but uh, for the training, but most of the trainings had incorporated some audio visual element. Mm -hmm. Uh, Valerie, you're trying to be able to yeah. collaborate on that. Or what about this space right out here? Could we do that space? You know no, how we, the overflow thinking, space, is that not appropriate? No, I was thinking if you, it could be loud for people who are okay. using the so library. Okay, we've chosen a date when there's no room. <laughs> <laughs> Go <laughs> board! <laughs> but we got a date. Yeah. A dates. This was okay. The one. So Tuesday, 11, 12, at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. But we don't have a room. That supposedly, that's what Rich said. It is also possible, um, other libraries have done this, to do training at another location. As long as we announce where we're doing it, we can put it on an agenda. I understand we prefer it to be here, but it is a possibility if this is the only sure date that's that works. OMA. Yes, as long as we announce it to the public because the public can go elsewhere. Some boards have training. retreats. It's not a board meeting. It counts as a board meeting. But so I mean, it's it, not covering up, you know, all that board stuff. Mm -hmm. So can you possibly check to see if even there's another space available in the library for us that we can do at that at that time? Mm -hmm. Thank or you. Or if we can move anything potentially, we can look at that. And we can, and we can also just do audio if we have to move to a room where it's not possible to video stream. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if we move to another library, what happens to audio, video, and all that? Mm -hmm. We're not required by law to post that, but we can always bring the audio device. We so wouldn't necessarily have video, but we could do that. Um, okay. And it wouldn't necessarily be another library. We could see if Village Hall has a room that we could use or something in the community. So there are options. Oh, good. Nice and close. Do we yeah. want to choose a second date just in case? If possible. Okay. All right, sure. Boy, thank goodness our board meeting is the 20th. <laughs> yeah. Is the 18th good? That's a Monday. Was, it, was there any day in the first week of November that we were available or no? I'm available all the first week. Uh, not the fourth. Thursday's the not good for me. And Thursday's no, no good Wednesdays down. Wednesdays are not good the for The 50s me. election day, so that puts you on the 8th. We were, Monday was and a Umer's, normal, right? Yeah, and Umer is uh, not available on the 8th. So the 4th through the 8th. Is okay. sort of shot. The eleventh is Veterans Day. Right. And we said thirteen. Roberto was not available. I'm out of time. Roberto right. and Sue were both unavailable. Fourteenth. So, so that leaves the fifteenth or the eighteenth. What was on the fourteenth? What was the fifteenth? What day is that? It's a Friday. Friday. Is that a Friday? Oh, That's Friday. I could do the fourteenth also because I what I have uh, scheduled is something during the day, so that's no big I deal. I would prefer the fourteenth and not the fifteenth. I'm good with the fourteenth. Yes, an alternate. Is, are the Just both of you okay Thursday? with the 14th? That's a Thursday, correct? The yes. 14th, I couldn't get here till probably 7.30 I, by rush. Okay. Okay. Can you do 7.30? Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a room on oh. the 14th? Oh, that's a huge... No, no. no. <laughs> Honest to God. We're having liter uh, literacy up here because we're going to be doing, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're setting up for crafts or something. Yeah, so um, that's that. Oh, yeah, I know the craft swap is, is the uh, that time of the month. Yeah, so like ESL has been moved all over the place. Like in Fort so we have no we? How about the 18th then? Yeah. I, I think. I think the original, um, because it is uh, Valerie route, uh, it is a Shakespeare project rehearsal. On the top. Uh, yep, and we can probably mm -hmm. ask them to move into uh, the Kate's space like they room before, because that yeah. room is open. Mm -hmm. So okay, yeah. Cool. So, All right then. But we were looking for an alternate. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but if we don't need it, well, we, I'll see if Jamie no, is available. Knowing that it's a rehearsal, yes. I'm thinking that it would be okay. Well, I'm, I'm talking about the presenter though. 
Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. sorry. <laughs> that, that aspect, right. Yeah. Is the 18th okay? So are yeah. we, so is the 12th, yes or no? The 12th is the number one option. We're oh. going to try and see oh. if we can move the rehearsal. Okay. So that we can have um, okay. the training there if the presenter is available. Okay, okay. and did you want to right. pick so another that, date? The 14th is a no. That's what we were going to say for our second date, but right. that's a no. Do we want to do a Saturday? How about no. the 18th? I can't, I can't, I can't we, do Saturdays. Uh, uh, Saturday, Saturdays I think, Sundays is the craft swap, right? Mm -hmm. Not Sunday. So no, if it is, I'm, I'm doing the craft care. swap. Yeah. I am literally on I, I work it. from the 18th to the 27th, except for our board meeting. That's my busiest. The library will be closing in Okay, so minutes. only the 12th, and then I'll ask for another date if the presenter right. is not available. So now. Is he for now? Only Fine. Center. And then if we need to, you know, wail and gnash our teeth, we will. Okay. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Okay. And thank you for working on training. I appreciate that. Okay. 10B. Action on proposed policy 2.02 anonymous letters to the Board of Trustees. Okay, I, I didn't see that. Is it something you're going to discuss? No, it's in, it's, it's on page the 42. Oh, you we know what it is? It it's a well, right? well, is <laughs> draft. Thank you for pointing yes, that out. Yes, I, I, I was going to say, this is what it looks like. My mistake. Okay, yes, now I see the draft. Oh. <laughs> um, at times, the library has received anonymous letters to the Board of Trustees or to myself as director. And I believe at the last meeting, we discussed an example policy from another library, which I have drafted this from. And so it's up to the board whether or not you would like to make a motion to approve this or discuss this. Yeah, I, I think we need something in place. So I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the proposed policy 2.02 anonymous letters to the Board of Trustees policy. Could what you state just, what this specific policy right. is? I mean, is it the second paragraph? Is that what we're talking about? It's the whole page. It's a whole, whole page. page. I but we, yeah. Okay, so Becky's on the table. Yeah, but now you can ask. Yeah. Now you can oh, talk sorry. about it. Okay, so um, so what we're doing here is um, apparently there are threats in these letters. Okay, which means that now you can go to the police. Will that letter be read? To so the public, to, or, and what's the plan for that aspect? Of to these? be clear, we have not received any threats. Oh, um, okay. But we have been receiving anonymous letters, and there was no clear um, policy or procedure for what to do with these letters, or how we address them, mm -hmm. or where they go. Um, and I have been sending the copies to the board as we have been receiving them. But again, there was no official policy. Um, I so a couple of the trustees asked that there be a policy Surely. in place. So then what we're doing is we'll, we'll all read it, but it won't be read in public. Uh, anything like this would be potentially FOIA-able, so a public record. So does that mean we should read it in public? I'm just trying to figure out how do we want to handle when we get those. If it's FOIA-able, just let them FOIA it, right? Yeah, we, get, we don't There's no to reason we have to publicize them. The same way they've them. been handled, but now people who are sending them anonymously can understand what's going to happen to their letters. And no, we're, we're not reading them at the board meetings or anything okay. like that because they don't specifically say public comment. Mm -hmm. If letters come oh, in gotcha. and say public comment, then they get read here. Okay, I understand. Yeah. But if it's, understand. if it's a public comment letter, when mm -hmm. it says public comment, mm -hmm. then there needs to be a name attached to it as well. It can't that's be anonymous. Not no, that's not, not that's not required. That's not required. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so I understand this now. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, um, just out of curiosity, can um, um, can that letter just be acknowledged that it was received, but inappropriate to be read, and, and, and in a sense just filed? So that's what this this policy says that when we receive anonymous letters, and uh, we can add language saying that specifically do not indicate read in public comment. That's what this says. But if any letter comes in and says read for public comment, that's why it would be read. The reason for this policy is so that in the future, if someone does say I sent in a letter and you didn't read it, it's because they didn't specifically say read it for public comment. So will we be 
acknowledging this new policy on in a board meeting so the public is aware if you don't request it's read in public comments it will not be read well we have our separate public comment policy that indicates the rules for public comment but that we're changing our policy this is a separate policy no, yeah. we're adding it. so do we not need to like notify the public what we're doing so we're doing it we're right. talking about it on the there's, video there's, there's okay video when we right. if we if the board adopts this policy it would also be posted with our other policies online and accessible to the okay public. good point okay so maybe when the policy committee is reviewing the public comment policy, mm -hmm. they need to add something in there about letters that are anonymous, you know, if we want to accept those into public comment or not. I don't think I, that's our choice. We're not allowed to, uh, by law, we're mm -hmm. not allowed to turn them away. They, yeah. they just have to say public comment. This covers us because we're not reading these anonymous letters in the public. This new policy covers us because we have a policy saying, well, you didn't say public comment. And we're getting these anonymous letters, so this is what okay. we're doing with them. Which makes sense. Then we're not, you know, they can't say anything because this is our policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Margaret, are you ready? Okay. So, Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? <coughs> sorry. Well, let me pass. I'm sorry. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass. You're going to pass? Okay. Trustee Derblick? Yes. Trustee Schofield? Yes. Treasurer Batello? Yes. Secretary Rosetsky? Yes. Vice President Tronco? Yes. President Keene? Yes. Oh, I did this. And Trustee Kadir? Yeah, I, I will vote yes. Okay. Yes. So it's yeah. seven to zero passes. I'd like to make a motion to approve an emergency expense not to exceed $25,000 to Oak Brook Mechanical Services, Inc. from the Capital Expenditures Special Reserve Building Fund for the repair and replacement of the mixed air chamber of Air Handling Unit 2 AHU-2 in the library's south basement. Second. This is under B, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm just verifying. Because there's that little separation there. It's like, yeah. it's still part of it. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Did we not receive a quote for no, the so work that needs to be done on that? It's an emergency. Reg. Sure. Thank you. At this time, no, we have an oral um, estimate that it won't be over $25,000, so that's why we, we are coming to the board with the information that we have, um, as opposed to waiting to November 20th. November 20th for what? For our next meeting. For our next meeting. Oh, so... Um, so this occurred last week on October 9th on Wednesday. Oh, and they, they didn't have time to send us anything? Uh, they had an estimator came up on okay. Friday, and mm -hmm. um, I'm waiting for that. So, but again, it's we're asking not to go over twenty-five thousand. What what actually it's are we down. doing here? We're replacing the mixed air. Um, it's repair, chamber. repair and replacement, or is it replacement? Replacement, because it says repair and replacement. Right. So part of the repair is to attach it to the existing uh, structure. The replacement part will be the actual mixed air okay. chamber. Okay. We're not replacing every thing. I know, but I would think they could have provided us something in writing. I mean, it's, it's something we'll have to do all writing. Time. Yes, of course. Well, I meant for the vote. Right. Again. It was course. only four days ago, so it was difficult for us to get something in writing. It was the weekend. So we're just voting to not go over a certain amount. We're not. Correct. I'm sorry, not four days ago, the ninth, right, you said? Yeah, it happened on Wednesday. We had somebody out looking at it, yeah. and we were determined that there was no point of trying to fix it. It mm -hmm. happened about a decade ago, um, and so it's already structurally weak. Mm -hmm. um, so now that has happened extensively, as you can see in the pictures. Um, so. Rich, um, a question for you. I know you're not uh, an expert in heating and air conditioning, but uh, do you have a sense of if it's going to be near this 25,000 yes. half or? It's going to be near that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm hoping 
really hoping that it's not going to go over because then I have to stop and we have to figure it out. But um, the fact is that we're going to use heavier steel, um, heavier um, uh, vent um, gauge. steel. Uh, so yeah, heavier gauge. Uh, we'd cross braces inside. Um, so. You know, if we replaced it exactly the way it is now, I think it would be maybe like 18, 19. So I'm hoping that the heavier steel is not going to cause that, you know, threshold to be passed. So um, because then, I mean, we can still come to the board and still ask the board to then do the code an official emergency and then, you know, not go to bid and, you know, so we can still get this work done. Um, but I would try, I would not want to go down that route because it just extends the amount of time that you know we have to, to fix it so and the um, the work that needs to be done what what did that affect on the building right now so right now what's happening is that the mixed chamber is not able to balance correctly so um, I'm having to try to anticipate the software thinking its inputs are correct but they're not because there's gaping holes in the mixed air chamber oh. um, and so Right now, because the weather is somewhat tempered, uh, I mean, oh, we're going to go cold tonight. I think there's a freeze warning. Yeah. Um, but eventually, as it gets cold, you know, it's going to have more impact on the building. Um, we won't be able to retain the heat as well. So um, then the heat now, it, with the damage, is essentially concentrated in the basement and not reaching... Uh, it's going through, but it's it, it, it causes the whole system to work harder, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the... The supply fan, the supply motor, that are all from 1998, um, are now working harder to try to draw more air <laughs> in. Um, it, the sensors are off um, because the sensors are thinking, hey, it's a closed system. With this opening or this opening only that I'm controlling. But the program doesn't understand that, well, there's this huge gaping hole underneath, on top, that's drawing air in from the basement. That's um, cold. That's cold and not, you know, if it's a, if it's, say, say you want to do return, that's one thing. Um, but if you're grabbing air from the basement, the air from the basement, there's a air intake that um, filters air in the basement with fresh air. Well, now it's grabbing that instead of just re doing the return. So it just makes the whole unit work inefficient. Um, and we're going into a time of the year where, um, you know, this work will require. Part of the, the issue with the emergency is that the, the work requires us to shut down the unit for about three days. So the west side of the building, um, every, the whole floor, this whole floor, um, everything from the commons west um, will maybe run it in the morning a little bit, then turn it off so they can work down there. Um, they're going to have to cut this. This thing is like 12 feet tall um, by probably 8 feet, 10 feet wide um, by another... 12 feet and so there's no opening to get it out of the the basement so they have to you know cut it um maybe torches so you don't want to have the air system working and taking those fumes through the building right because the filters are not going to remove that kind of fume so well, and they'll cause a danger for the people using the torches right, right. we so, also need to get this repaired as soon as possible because as rich said the part of the system was made in what 1998 yeah, and yeah. so the longer it has to yeah. work hard the more chance of worse repairs would be needed yes you know definitely right. rich can i ask you a question yeah. when was the last time was this actually reviewed for maintenance i mean how it's, did this it's occur? continually oh so what happened was um if you look at the picture on um, page two this orange device it is a motor it, it's called an actuator and uh, it failed. Um, it provides electricity and tension to open up the fresh air uh, dampers. And when it fails, it fails shut um, for safety, um, as well as freeze protection in the winter. Uh, but the system was operating on the, under oh, uh, the assumption that that was going to be open. Um, and it closed the re return. So if you look at, say, this uh, container, it has a straw, you're, su you're sucking air out of here, and everything's closed, it uh, structurally failed, or, or you could say imploded, mm -hmm. uh, but structurally failed you know, in order. It's just like a can or a you know, bottle. So. Or like a water bottle. Yeah, and we, we, 
three times, four times a year, we inspect everything. It just failed, and it just failed in such a way that, um, you know, it caused this kind of issue. So the replacement will have uh, more structure, and it will be uh, more stable. We're also going to ask the BAS, uh, the building automation uh, system supplier, to add a sensor in there that's a negative, a static uh, pressure sensor and code it in such a way that if there's a negative uh, pressure uh, that's building up, that it shuts down the system, um, which wasn't in there and that could have prevented this. But again, when they designed it back in 98, it wasn't added in there and we haven't added it since then. So, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, Margaret. Okay. Trustee you, how do you vote? Trustee Kadir? Uh, yes, yes. Yes? Okay. Trustee Derblick? Um, I will abstain without a written <coughs> okay. a quote. Trustee Schoenfeld? I'm not actually voting because there's no quote. Okay, you vote so on something abstain? if you don't abstain. Okay. Judge Botello? Yes. Secretary Rosansky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. President King? Yes. Five yeses, two abstain passes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the budgeted expenditure not to exceed $38,964.31 to CDWG from the Capital Expenditures Special Reserve Equipment Fund for a three-year support agreement renewal with HPE for the library servers. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, let him second the name. Judge Patel? Yes. Okay. Any questions? I guess I'd like to know, I'm looking at pages and pages of line items trying to understand. It's a three-year support agreement um, for what equipment? The library servers. And this we have five of them? There's four servers, one sand, two um, oh, here it is. auto loaders for uh, tape backups. Okay. So all equipment is listed in here. So these these are the servers for the whole library. There isn't all the, whatever the servers are that we have, they will be under this. Correct? Yeah. So these are the HP okay. servers that we bought five years ago. We fine. only got five year support. Yeah, that's fine. We evaluated, I evaluated, and I believe that uh, three years uh, to get them out to eight years should be okay. And then I've, that's what we did last time. Oh, no, I understand. I just wanted to make sure we don't have servers for this and servers for that, and this only covers an, a, a portion. Okay, thank you. Sure. Anything else? Okay. Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Yes, yes. Thank you. Trustee Dublin? Yes. <laughs> Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Treasurer Botello? Yes. Secretary Rosansky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. President Keen? Yes. Seven to zero passes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the budgeted expenditure not to exceed $12,654.55 to CDWG from the Capital Expenditure Special Reserve Equipment Fund and $12,984 of committed federal E-rate program grant funds for the total of $25,638.55 for the purchase of replacement firewalls. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. I was waiting. I was giving people the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> told you until I took it. Thank you. Should I have like my eggs or something? <laughs> <laughs> that would be powerful. Oh, I guess I said. Yes. yes, good idea. Or just rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Bring it back. Questions? All right, Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Dublick? 
Okay, we are on D, which is for the okay. firewall. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Just want to make sure I got this one. Can you vote? Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Schoenfeld, yes. And Treasurer Vatello? Yes. Secretary yes. Zinski, Vice President Trump? Yes. President Keene? Yes. Yeah. 7 to 0 passes. I'd like to make a motion to approve the proposal of the changes to the uh, sick time pool policy for that 34. Okay, I'll second it since nobody opened their mouth. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I do have questions. Okay. Good. First of all, my question is, isn't this something that sick pool is related to the staff? Isn't yes. that their thing and what they should vote on, not us? This is a library policy, policy. so the board has to vote on it. Okay, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Because... But this, these changes do give the most benefit to the staff, from what we understand. But from what I remember of a mm -hmm. sick pool, they are supposed to put so much money in mm -hmm. in order to be able to eventually collect from it. There's no money. money. It's, uh, days. it's, it's days. Um, days of sick time. Okay. So staff. Okay. Who, Excuse me. I meant sure. sick days. Yeah. Staff who have what they feel are additional sick days would like to donate to the sick pool can do that for anyone who has a need to use the sick pool. Um, staff, according to the policy, cannot designate who they are giving these days to right. Right. and must retain at least five sick days for themselves. Mm -hmm. The way I remember it from when I worked, which was a while ago, that if you did not participate by giving a day or however many days you had to, you weren't able to use it. There's nothing in the policy related to that. Okay. Um, as long as the staff is cool with it. <laughs> the two changes I, listed are in red, and the first change um, is in um, indicating that any employee eligible through our benefits for short-term disability must apply for those benefits in order to still be eligible for sick pool. What that does okay. is it maintains more sick pool time for anyone else who might want to use it since the staff does have access to this benefit already, at least full-time staff does. So we want them to use all of the benefits they have access to while leaving time in the sick pool for others. So that's the reason for the first proposed change. And the second proposed change, leave donated from the sick pool will be coded as vacation in the payroll system, is because related to short-term disability. The only way you can use short-term disability without money being deducted if you get time from another source such as sick pool is if it is coded as vacation. And so that's the reason for these two changes. This is something that our attorney has advised is legal and something that we can do as long as it's written in the policy. So, okay. So we are calling donated leave for disability vacation, but no other. It's not for disability. It's, it's so sick time pool is has its specific um, uses as outlined in number four of this particular policy so it comes from the donors all of the employee donors it comes from their sick time only that's why it's called sick time pool right but the attorney advised that you code this as vacation when it's used for disability so no so okay. if an employee is eligible for short-term disability it depends on um, our insurance providers whether sure. they determine mm -hmm. that eligibility. Mm -hmm. They only get paid out, I believe, for 60% of their salary when they collect that benefit. In order for them to be able to also use the sick time pool to get up to 100% of their salary and to be able to use this time, the um, payroll system must code that as vacation. Okay. If we code it as sick time, then the employee would be having to repay their short-term right. disability. And that sure. only applies to disability? No, that it depends on how the insurance company determines whether or not they are eligible for short-term disability. Right, but other people who will be using mm -hmm. this, it's just sick time. 
that would have mm -hmm. nothing to do with a decision made by the insurance company, but disability would. Short-term so disability, yes. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. That's what I wanted to clarify. Thanks so much. Sure. Valerie, I do have a question with regards um, to <coughs> the balance. Mm -hmm. Are, um, do we, other than the employees, mm -hmm. um, are we allowed to know the balance? The we can share based? that with the board, absolutely. We share it uh, according to the policy. We share it with the staff. So we do have the balance shared with the staff. I can share it with you as well. Um, I'm just curious just to uh, get a sense of, you know, like for example, how much is available for someone in need. Mm -hmm. Our um, staff has been very generous. I know the last time I looked, there were over 500 hours. Great, thank you. Can I ask another question in yes. terms of that now? Is it able to be rolled over for the next fiscal year? It doesn't expire. There's, in the policy, it says it does not expire once it's in so the So it sick can pool. multiply from year to year? Yes, the sick pool can, okay. yes. Because mm -hmm. some of them, they have to use that by the end mm -hmm. of such year. So in, so in our policy, too, it does state um, that if you have not, like if you were given sick time but you didn't use it, like you came back to work, you have to put it back into the sick pool. Okay. So we do have that already in the policy as Thank well. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. See, the way I remember it when I, would, when I was working, I never used it. Mm -hmm. But people would be able to use it, but they were only able to use it if they were part of it mm -hmm. to begin with. Yep. And then, once it gets down to a certain point, mm -hmm. people have to add more time to it. Now they don't pay out though either. No, some, this is some specifically facilities here. pay out. No, we don't pay okay. out from the sick pool. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, <coughs> Excuse me, Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you, Trustee Driblick. Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld. Yes. Treasurer Botello? Yes. Secretary Rosansky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. President Keene? Yes. Seven to zero passes. Thank you. Apologies, I'm turning on I'm turning on mic off so you guys don't have to hear me coughing. So that's like Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. That's what we figured. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve Executive Director Valerie Marshall and Assistant Director Victoria Lutz as signers on all Niles Main District Library bank accounts and to remove former executive director Cindy Rademacher from all library bank accounts. Second. Thank you. Does anyone have okay. any questions? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Kadir, how do you vote? Oh, I have a question. Oh. I'm sorry. No, that's beautiful. Um, we're removing the former director, was mm -hmm. she the only one that was signing? Um, From the staff, yes. Okay. Currently, there's uh, Treasurer Botello and President Keene on there. Right, that's what I thought. Plus the director. Why are we adding the assistant director? Because there are times when I'm not here. For example, um, when I was on vacation most recently, I mm -hmm. couldn't sign payroll. And so... And would uh, one of them be able to do that? Yes. Okay. I'm, I, I'm not in favor of giving the assistant director the duties of the director. Um, I think we're starting, it's starting to become a pretty gray area. And um, I know you've, you've been off like several days since you started, but I'm thinking that's all going to work its way out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think having two trustees with completely different, you know, uh, work styles in you is sufficient, but I, I'm not in the habit of putting someone at a different level in the position of the director. So that that's my concern about doing this. And can I ask another question? Mm -hmm. Why is it taking why did it take so long to take Cindy off the actual that I do not know. I was not aware she was still on the accounts. Um because that would have been the responsibility. I, my understanding was that Pilar was added onto the account, so I don't know why Cindy wasn't removed at that time. I just became aware that Cindy was still on there, so that's why. And it does require a board vote for this to be enacted. The institutions won't do anything. But you were on the account. I'm on the account. I don't have signing privileges for all of the bank accounts. Oh, so that wasn't done either, I no. think. Okay, got it. All right. So just as uh, FYI, um, 
I participated in some of the discussions with Talar, and if you remember, there was a lot going on in Talar's plate during that mm -hmm. time. So um, I set in and we made adjustments to the um, credit card uh, where we added Rich um, uh, in, as a signer for that, for that account. And the other accounts, um, we simply did not have sufficient time to address all of those needs. So with regards to my oversight, that's part of the reason, the overwhelming amount of um, work that needed to be done during that time. But that's a long span, though. That's why I'm questioning that. Mm -hmm. So what and, is you know, in terms of, right, uh, it did take that long. Um, but ultimately, I mean, our uh, accounts are secured. There was no malfeasance to the accounts. And um, recognizing that it needed to be updated, Valerie and I spoke, and uh, we needed to make that correction. So uh, we, you know, we acted. Um, now, yes, it was delayed, but um, you know, other than saying there was a lot going on during that time, and to reassure the public, uh, our accounts were in no way uh, compromised. And is Rich still somewhere as a signer? Yes. And through, what is the purpose of that? What's the purpose of that? Um, through the credit union um, credit card um, for um, expenses that, what was the, the underlying communication that we had? Because Absolutely. Um, the credit card is from the Northwest Credit Union and right. they require individual grantors and uh, securers. So I and yourself are on there and we personally guarantee that if the library were to default, we would pay any debts that the library incurred. So our uh, previously we had uh, the director take that responsibility and some board members like yourself, mm -hmm. um, but at that time nobody would, and we needed someone to be out there. So, so, so I, I would. Can you re repeat that? At that time, nobody would do. I, I didn't catch that. What were you saying, Rich? Uh, we didn't have anyone that was willing to guarantee the credit card. Uh, expenses if the library defaulted. I know we can't make the change because it's not on the agenda, but I personally do not feel comfortable with having a staff member be the personal guarantor on something for the library. I don't feel that's proper. I don't feel that's the right way to do that at all. So we can um, look into putting that on the November please, agenda. Please, because mm -hmm. yeah, I believe it used to be the up. treasurer. Yeah, that's, that, more than one. So that's yeah. fine. Somebody, treasurer, or president. Somebody, will, I'm sure somebody will step up. If not, I will. I'm more than happy to. But mm -hmm. I don't Thank think you. that you should have to do that mm -hmm. as part of your I was job. Happy to step in and take Rich, you're always happy to step in. That's what's great about you. Take over, then that makes perfect sense to me. That's. I think it's a heavy obligation for an employee. Yes. 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 Thank you. Oh, it is, and I, I just simply want to acknowledge and thank Rich again, yes. because um, if you remember, there was a lot of turmoil during those times, and There's we needed to continue to provide for the services. Um, and the services, I mean, in the, that uh, Rich um, felt that there was a greater need to continue to, you know, make those small purchases, yeah, purchases that were, with their, that were within that limit. Uh, in order to keep the operation going, because um, there was a there were a lot of delays, and there were many times when the board was deadlocked on simple things as paying payroll. So, Rich, thank you so much, and uh, welcome the discussion on making changes to that um, the way that account works. And related to why I am proposing that the assistant director also be added as a signer. Um, is because the assistant director does act as the director when I am not here. And the way that I view that position is that she knows everything that I know. And it's also a double check for, so the auditors are actually here starting to do our audit for the previous fiscal year. And every time we have more than one person, more than one staff member looking at something and aware of something financially, it protects the institution against potential fraud. And so that's my recommendation of having another person who can potentially do this and has their eyes on the checks that are signed 
Well, she can definitely have her eyes on everything, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. but as far as the authority, uh, mm -hmm. the, it should be the director. Mm -hmm. so I'm my comfortable position. with having the assistant director on mm -hmm. as a signer. And that, that <laughs> she's worked here for over 30 years. She's clearly trustworthy. I know, but the, it's not that. It's the position. She's not. Right. You so know, we have to figure out who the director is. Yes, we know who the director is. I know, but you keep not here. You keep. When she's That's not why here, we have two trustees said. on the board mm -hmm. who are elected. I, I, I agree that uh, Victoria should be should be added. Well, so we can sign. That's so. Right. so um, I think we've. We've discussed it enough, so if you want to uh, yeah, have I'll we, close Are we finished discussing it? Uh, I'll close in saying that I have had been have had, had uh, to step in and come in and um, make provide a signature. Uh, I'm glad to continue to do that, uh, but I have no problem with um, Ms. Cruz coming in, uh, being added. I also, uh, I'll, I'll add something very quick. Part of being an assistant director is to eventually, potentially, one day become a director. And the more responsibilities that we introduce Victoria to, the better we're doing as a library to get her ready if she's ever interested in that next potential step. And something as simple as this action is another thing of showing trust to the staff that we've now put in place versus not trusting the staff, which was the prior practice of certain members of this board. Trust is not my concern. I it's, wasn't, the, I, it's the graying of the positions. I, I understand. Just just so I can be that's clear. That's your opinion that I gave mine. I, 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 I move to proceed to a vote. Sounds yeah. like a plan. Okay. Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Yes. Trustee Durblik? Uh, no. Trustee Schoenfeld? I abstain. Okay. Trish Botello? Yes. Secretary Rosensky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. President Keene? Yes. Five yeses, one abstain, one no. Passes. Do you want to the next one in the discussion and the action if you need it? Sure. Uh, I'd like to just state for a discussion at this point uh, the, the uh, December 2024 regular board meeting, potentially uh, removing that as a meeting date completely for the month of December. Uh, if there's no pressing matters, it's the week before the holiday. Uh, it's something that we would be only taxing body. Can I pause you? Because that sounds like it's part of the motion. Oh, it's, not a motion. <laughs> it's a discussion. I said this is just for a discussion. I didn't make a motion. Okay, okay. Uh, this is just discussion at this point. I just went into my part of the discussion. Uh, we were the only taxing body in the village that actually had a meeting last December. It's uh, school districts miss meetings in, in the summer. It's if we have everything in order, I think we have the staff again, like I just said, we have a staff that we trust in place. They could pay the bills for one month and we can come back and reconvene in January. What does the statute say about that? That's a question though. Uh, there are several libraries, including my previous library, that skip meetings. So it is uh, possible and common practice. It depends on the authority that the board gives for paying bills. Uh, at my previous library, uh, at one point, there were meetings skipped where the director also did not have the authority to pay bills. And at that point, several of our vendors would call um, asking where their payment was and uh, services were potentially disrupted, things of that nature. So by um, can't, sorry, go ahead. I, uh, sorry, I, I totally, I totally appreciate you bringing in uh, practice from elsewhere, but just the, the lawyer in me isn't willing to say because somebody else did it, it's allowed. Because there are people who do all sorts of things that aren't allowed um, and don't know it. It's not that they're doing it deliberately. They don't even know that it's in the statute. So, so before we cancel a meeting, I'd like to at least check the statute to make sure that there's no obligation to have a meeting every month or anything of that sort. Well, I don't think I don't think that's the obligation. I think the obligation is when you change a meeting that you notify the public. But I do have one concern. If we cancel the December meeting and checks need to be cut or processed by a certain date, so then you plan on and this board needs to approve those checks. What are we going to do? Have all the November and December checks ready for November? I mean, how do we? No, you would approve the executive director to pay the bills. You would give her the power to pay the bills for the month. 
No, that's that's a board decision. We yeah. vote on it every month. And the board has the ability to give the power to the executive director if we want to. So you're not approving payment of the bills. Derek, the motion just explained that at other libraries they. I know, but you know no, that's no, no, never a know. saving you grace. You don't know. You're just cutting me off, which is what you've done. I know you. Everybody. I know, but I'm. My, no, no, I, I want to forget no, my you're still point of me concern. Off. I'm still trying to talk. I know you're repeating the same thing that so we've already you all had. Meeting, Go ahead. All meeting, you've repeated the same thing, and we've allowed it. Director Marshall has just turned around and explained to us that at other libraries, including one that she was at, the board gives the power to the executive director to pay the bills. If there's any pressing matters, absolutely we have to have a meeting. If it's just common practice, regular bills for buying materials, paying the electric bill, paying things like that, we have the ability to give Director Marshall the power to do that and pay the bills and keep the library running. An example of a library that has such a policy is the Helen Plum Library in Lombard. They have a policy where the library can make payments as they come up so we don't they don't have to wait for the monthly board meeting. The board reviews payments and if they have concerns with a payment they ask the director to potentially explain um, an expense or get a refund if necessary, although that does not really come wow. up very often. There is flexibility. It depends on what the board votes for, whether at a one-time exception or in changes in policy. But the board does have final authority on how payment of the bill Can is I, I could go ahead, Carolyn. I, I could see go. having all these payments approved in advance and then send them out. But I'm concerned about December's going to be here. We won't be here, and then we're not even looking at these checks. So I, I mean that's. That's I totally don't trust the director to pay the bill. See, you keep you putting trust into it. The word is the board has a responsibility to oversee things. Okay, yes. there's a lot to be seen when you review these checks. I know, I review them. And now, well, I don't know where you review them, but um, I'm not sure if it's in the register or if it's actually no, don't the, know, but the it entire documentation. Because there's been discrepancies, and I always wondered that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm I'm just uncomfortable with the board dismissing their authority completely. Uh, can I please ask? Oh God, I'm finished. Go right ahead. Thank uh, you. I'll go after you, Patty. Thank you. If you want to go first, I'll be no. nice. Go ahead. Okay. Could you please get a copy of the policy that they have at How Helen Plum to show us? Sure, it's online and I can send And that possibly email as well. even send it to us prior to the meeting in November so we have time to review it and we can discuss it even at November meeting and make the decision on the December meeting, having it or not. Well, Although we're going to have to make a decision on this anyway, so what? Well, but I'd like to see their policy. Of course, and in answer to removing board authority, that it would not be the goal of this whatsoever. The board always has oversight and governance of the finances, and those finances for December would be given in the January board meeting for review. It would just mean we paid the bills previously, as opposed to specifically the board saying you can send out the checks. Now. And that's the exact issue at hand, that everything would be sent out before it's even approved. That in itself sounds like an oxymoron. Well, that, it depends on how the board chooses to operate. The board mm -hmm. can delegate that authority to the director to approve bills and send them out as they come in, as opposed to the board having to look at every check and make sure that it's allowed to be sent out before it's sent out. So that's the, it's, it's a choice by the board. And what we're talking about tonight is doing it one time. We're not talking about doing it on a regular basis. No, just I'm sorry. Tr Trustee Kadir was trying to speak. Yeah. Go ahead. You've got it. I, I said no disrespect to anyone, uh, but we don't want to have uh, a discussion that's as long as a board meeting to decide whether to have whether or not to have a board meeting. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead and make. Oh, I'll make Roberto was waiting to I'm say. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, Roberto. I'm, I'm just simply going to state that I am available to meet. I'm not traveling. I'm not going to be out of town, so I will be in town uh, as scheduled for our meeting on that date on December. Yeah. So will I. And to answer uh, Trustee Kadir's question, uh, Rich looked up the statutes, and um, as long as the board has no fewer than five meetings within a fiscal year, it is allowable per statute. 
could do that as well. Do you foresee any mm -hmm. other things? So that would be a pretty quick board meeting, of course. Yeah, good idea. Presumably. Are you done now? Because somebody else has some questions. Yeah. No. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Go just ahead. wondering if you know of anything else that we would be doing. I don't know of any pressing matters in December, especially if the levy is decided before December 3rd, as it has to be. Has to be. But we never know if, like with the air conditioning right. unit, if an emergency might arise. Well, emergency. Can we, playing yeah. devil's advocate, have that date as a tentative if we need to for an emergency or whatever, if there's, can, you know, potentially issue big issues we need to discuss leave that reserved we, we can absolutely do that we just have to notify the public if we cancel a meeting with yes a certain but then it, and then if we restate it you know we do have to have things out in the appropriate time frame so and yeah. you think that by our meeting next month you'd have a better idea if there's I mean we can never know when emergencies are going to pop up but you would have a better idea if, if there was anything else pressing that was there's absolutely to. no way between month to month. We don't get the invoices that far in advance as far as to be able to know what they would be for December. And I just mean as far as other yeah. things happening in the meeting. I mean, I'll have that. a better idea since this meeting to the next meeting. Of course, I would let the board know when something comes up, but there's no way to anticipate unexpected things. So should we just put this off until next month when she has a better understanding my of what's going on? My concern is that we should she should we should be prepared in November to be handling everything before canceling December. We should know now. This is October though. I know, so between now what are we gonna walk in here in November and in November say what? Then well, we vote to cancel the meeting and then how do we handle whatever business that needs to be taken care of like what i don't know she said she won't know until she's well then we give her the authority to pay the bills in december and we tackle the rest in january uh, Dir director marshall i believe you need to add clairvoyance to your uh, job description <laughs> <laughs> i second that <laughs> So the question is, do we want to vote tonight or do we want to vote next month? I to, uh, uh, <laughs> I personally think, why don't we wait and see what, if next month we might have a better idea if there's going to be anything we definitely need to be here for. At this time, I don't anticipate anything. That's the best I can say. <coughs> or do we have a majority that wants to... Oh, I mean, we could just take a vote, see what it does, and I mean, I don't know how else to find out a majority of what we want to do. What about Trustee Kadir's recommendation about a quick meeting just to sign checks? Yeah, so at least you're informed. How soon can we do that? Well, if, well, if we're going to meet, we might as well meet. Yeah, if you're going to come, you're going to come. You're going to be here, so what's the difference at that point? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. A 10-minute well, meeting is better than a Well, if you ask questions ahead of time, it would be a 5-minute meeting, but that's a different story. Pardon me? I said if everybody asked their questions ahead of the meeting, then we'd probably only be here for five minutes, but that's a different story. Well, if you have agenda items, then it's it's important to present your questions and comments to the public at the meeting. So shall we vote now, then? Oh, we'll have to make a real motion first. I'd like to make a motion uh, to cancel the December, tentatively cancel the December 2024 regular board meeting as long as there's no emergency or pressing issues that will need to be discussed. Uh -huh. Word it that way. It you have to get better. up and end a motion like that. I think you got to move to cancel it and then add it back. I don't think you can say if you add a clause like that. Is that what it's about confusing to the public. motion huh? to the cancel or is it not? Hold on a second, Amelia. I think that's confusing to the public. Okay, fine. I'd like to make a motion to cancel yeah. the December 2024 regular board meeting. Is there a second? I'd like to amend the motion to cancel the December. Do we need a second before she amends it? Yes. Okay, okay, I'll second it so she can make her amendment. I would like to amend it to say, um, um, 
a motion to cancel the December 2024 regular board meeting, giving authority to the director to approve the payment of all bills. Is there a second? second. I, I'll second that. I'll second that. I'm sorry, who second that? Thank you. <laughs> Just realized I missed that. <clears throat> okay, so we are having a, we're ready, right? We're going to vote on the amendment. On the amendment motion, exactly. To cancel the 24th, uh, December tw uh, 2024 meeting, but give the authority to the director to pay all bills. Okay. Uh, Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Trustee Drublik? No. Trustee Schoenfeld? No. Trish Botello? I'm going to pass. Secretary Rosansky? <laughs> <laughs> how do you vote no to your own motion? <laughs> it's, it's not my motion. No, no I'm talking to no. you. <laughs> it was your motion. You said that you voted no. no. <laughs> Um, oh, I, uh, I guess yes. Yes, okay. Vice President Schoenko? Yes. <laughs> President Keene? Um, yes, that makes it a yes. And uh, Treasurer Botello, you passed? Uh, I'll pass, yes. But if you pass, you, you, you have to either either you have to abstain. Okay. abstain. Uh, abstain. abstain. Exactly. abstain. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Abstain. Okay, so let's see. We have two no's. One abstain. One, four two, days. three, four. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. Or does so it's it passes? passes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So it's not canceled. It's canceled. It is canceled. canceled, and the bills will be paid. And the library will still be standing in January. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> What a new room. Okay. <laughs> new membrane. <laughs> mm. All right. All right. Uh, uh, action. Uh, strategic plan now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, strategic planning consultant. At this point, we'll do a discussion for selection of the strategic planning consultant based on the proposals received. <coughs> So Valerie, you gave us three different um, proposals for yes. strategic mm -hmm. plan. Would you like to talk about? Thank you. Sure. Um, myself and Annie, who is our community engagement manager and who has also worked on strategic plans at other libraries, um, in talking with other staff members and leadership in the library as well, our recommendation, our first choice, would be the Fast Forward Library's uh, strategic do. planning proposal. Mm -hmm. They are actually the middle-priced proposal of the three that we received, but they provided the most context and examples mm -hmm. for what their data looks like, what their reporting looks like. I've gotten the most recommendations from other libraries for this consultant, and we think that the way that they create their strategic plans is the easiest for the public to digest and understand. And I, um, I really have gone to several presentations by this vendor mm -hmm. at different conferences, and she is easy to work with. And so that's why we recommend this vendor okay. as our preference. Can I ask one question? Yes. Were there any options in these other two mm -hmm. recommendations yes. that you would like to add to this proposal, or do you feel that I this one encompassed that, whatever yes. else they were doing? I this feel was just that better. all of the vendors have similar procedures and included very similar things. Okay. The only thing that uh, the Library IQ vendor Library IQ is actually a software that the library can choose to purchase separate from the strategic planning proposal. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it helps us um, put our data for circulation, for where library card holders are and things of that nature in a very user-friendly model. It helps us with collection development, things of that nature. I actually purchased it for my previous library 
I did not have a chance to work with it, but I have seen it at library conferences and it would be a very useful platform for us to use, but we do not have to work with Library IQ as our strategic planning vendor in order to get this um, software. Did you make that recommendation some time ago, or did you bring this up some time ago? I thought I remember you I probably talking mentioned about this. it during okay. my interview or sometime in the beginning of here okay. as something that could help us as far as okay. gathering data. Yeah, I re remember hearing this. Okay, and then and this is something we would use all the time, not just library for this. queue. Yes, yes. Um, ongoing. But it would be separate. So I would, if I wanted to get this um, software, I would put it as a proposal in a future board meeting okay. because it's not something that Fast Forward Libraries provides. It's a different. Sure. Service. So you, Thank in you. your Thank opinion, you it's like comparing an apple to an orange. As far as the vendors? The IQ versus the, uh, the one that you recommended? As far as strategic planning, no. These are all different types of apples, as far as that analogy goes. They all provide similar services, and um, Library IQ offers a software that the other two vendors do not offer, which would be why they were my second choice. But as far as strategic planning, I think the strongest candidate is Fast Forward Libraries based on the data they provided and the recommendations from other libraries. I have a question for you. You mm -hmm. said this was the middle price. Aren't we obligated to go with the lowest price? No. No? Only for bids. Okay. And this didn't have to go out to any sort of... Bidder. This went out... So we had a request for proposals Okay. that was on a library's website, and I also emailed it to five potential vendors who were recommended by other libraries, so it was out for the public. And in the request for proposals, it does say the library can choose whatever vendor based on criteria that we choose, and it's not only price that we look at. Right. Okay. Okay. So that I was, wanted to clarify that for the yes, public. Yes, that you was in the request for proposal. Trustee Trunkel, that also applies to bids. It does also you, apply you to bids. You could get away with the not going with the cheapest because it's more beneficial for you to go with a higher price for your entity. Depending on what you're looking for. It's a little bit more strict with bids as far as how you would make that doable. decision, but it mm -hmm. is doable. Mm -hmm. And this total is 28400 for uh, strategic fast forward, forward libraries, twenty eight thousand four hundred. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Come in. Any other questions? No, I'm good. I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve fast forward libraries for our strategic planning uh, for the total of twenty eight thousand four hundred dollars for all three phases of the strategic plan. Second. You didn't have to wait. That's so exciting. You're welcome. <laughs> it is really exciting. <laughs> How do you second the correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. All set? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Vote? Thank you. Trustee Kadir, how do you vote? Yes. Trustee Dribbler? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Treasurer Botello? Yes. Vice President, or Secretary Rosensky? Yes. Vice President Trump? Yes. President Keene? Yes. Yay! Okay. Okay. 7 to can 0 I, passes. Can I ask a question? So sure. when, when will we begin with this? I have to next year? speak with the vendor to see what their timeline would be, okay. but I'll let the board know. It'll probably be a while, though, right? I don't know. It depends on their schedule with other okay, libraries. Okay, Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank you so much. I'd, you like know make, that. I'd like to make a motion to move to executive session to discuss minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Opens Meeting Open Meetings Act, whether for purposes of approval by the body of the minutes or the semi-annual review of the minutes, as mandated by Section 2.06.5. ILCS 120-2C21. Second. Second. Now I get three people I heard Patty first. Stuff. I, I heard Patty, Patty first as well. Okay. Thank you. And the time? And the loudest. Well, thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> Trustee um, Kadir, how do you vote? Yes. Thank you. Trustee Dribblick? Yes. Secretary, <coughs> excuse me, Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Treasurer uh, Botello? Yes. Secretary Rosansky? Yes. I said yes. Uh, Vice President Trump? Yes. Thank you. And President King? Yes. Thank you. Could we Sorry, take a three minute passes. break? Yes, please. Thank you. We don't have to vote on it, right? <laughs> no. Awesome. <laughs>
that's why. Oh. All right. So we are back in open session. Uh, we need someone seconds. to make a motion to resume open session. I'd like to make a motion to resume open session at 9.43 p.m. on October 16th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Perfect. I'm opposed. I'd like to stay in close session. <laughs> Can, can, somebody, uh, can somebody hit the end button on that? <laughs> <laughs> or can we just ignore the hand? I give up. Just, just stay on the phone when we leave. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, this is the closed session. Uh, I, I'd like so to, it's going to need the date put on there. Please. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Can I do all of them at once or does it have to be each individual? You can do them all at once. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, May 30th, 2023, July 10th, 2023, July 17th, 2024, and July 31st, 2023, executive closed session minutes with, with, with grammatical corrections and people's names spelled correctly. Second. <laughs> Oops. Oh, wait, I need that again for the next motion. Oh, second. Sure. I oh, Sue <laughs> seconded it. I'm sorry. It's I'm just. I'm paying attention to him taking my minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you them back, I promise. Trustee Kadir? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 To approve the minutes, Trustee Kadir? Uh, yeah. Trustee Derblick? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Treasurer Botello? Yes. Secretary Rosansky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. President Keene? Yes. All yes passes. I'd like to make a motion uh, to keep is it, it, the motion to, to keep the minutes confidential. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, make, make a motion confidential for May 30th, 2023, July 10th, 2023, July 17th, 2024, and July 31st, 2023, executive closed session minutes. Second. Trustee Kadir? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Trustee Derblick? Yes. Trustee Schoenfeld? Yes. Treasurer Vitello? Yes. Secretary Rosansky? Yes. Vice President Trunko? Yes. President Keene? Yes. All yeses pass. Any other? Okay. Does anyone have any other? Madam President, under other? Um, I am making a request for us to form a committee to discuss finances and um, to form a committee itself. Okay, so to form a finance committee. Yes, okay. please. Uh, I would like to say yes, we can form the committee. I would like to appoint you as the head of that committee. Would you accept? Yes, thank you. Is anyone interested in serving? I have no problem. I am. Well, okay. I, do we want a well, committee you're also more on than the policy two? committee, right? So I'm on the policy, so if somebody else is on this, it's fine. Okay. Do you both want to be on it, or do? Mm -hmm. you? Oh yeah, sure. Oh, you can't do three. Could it be a committee oh. of the whole? Can't do three. Well, they. Oh. You uh, can if you choose to. It's not in our bylaws. In our bylaws, it says at least. So I think you can do three. If, if I, I remember correctly, I don't have it right on the top of my head. Three, then it has to be an open meeting, it's a doesn't quorum. it? No. So when you assign a committee, the committee itself has its own quorum. So with uh, three, three board yeah, members or two. three committee members, the quorum is two. two. So that's separate from a full board meeting in that quorum. As soon as as soon as a committee is delegated, it has its own quorum to right. conduct business, and whoever is on the committee cannot discuss committee business outside of the committee. Um, can we actually form this committee right now since it wasn't on the original agenda? I cannot guarantee saying yes, but my understanding is because this is a responsibility of the, the president, president and it's not an it's action of the full board that mm -hmm. we can do it. That is my understanding. Okay. Just making sure. okay. And I would like to also point trust or you have a question first. Yeah, I just thought of something. I forgot which one of you said that, but if you're on this board and you cannot discuss what transpires Not until you're in this recording. committee, then maybe you can't give copies of what, remember I asked you, could we get copies of whatever you discuss at some meeting? Maybe you can't do that either. 
So we can share information. Okay. That information um, is board business, and the committee okay. can report to the board. So the other what we can't do is is hold a meeting making decisions. Oh, got you. Okay. Yeah. I just said, okay. Thank you. Sorry about it's that. It's like with, when they had the the bylaw committee, they they reviewed them and they said, okay, these are changes we would like to see put before the board, mm -hmm. and then the board voted on whether those changes were made. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with that committee. And you, committee members of the uh, bylaws committee did not discuss what recommendations we would make to the full sure, board outside sure, of those meetings sure. because that has to be public record. But as far as sharing the information with the rest of the board, we are allowed to do I that. Got it. Okay, thank you. All right, do so we know? Do we know when we want to meet? <laughs> so that will be up to you. Okay, you'll let us I know. will send out possible dates and sure. uh, we'll be working both of you uh, so that we can come into an agreement on those specific sure, things. Sure, sure, absolutely. I'd also like to appoint uh, Director Marshall as the staff liaison to the committee. Thank as you. As you are to the others. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Should we include uh, Lucy or anything if there's any questions with checks or things like that nature or policies and procedures for her or no? We can but it's more difficult for her schedule for yeah. her to attend the committee meetings okay. but if the committee gives me questions I can get them from her and then bring them to the Perfect. committee. Okay. Is in there any other other? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the October uh, board meeting at 9.50 p.m. Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.